Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the heart, just briefly. So before we continue, just remember that the blue I draw represents deoxygenated blood and the red represents oxygenated blood, so blood high in oxygen. So here we're looking at the anterior view of the heart, the superficial anatomy. So the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava bring deoxygenated blood to the right side of the heart, to the right atrium, then to the right ventricle. The right ventricle will pump this deoxygenated blood up the pulmonary trunk and then into the left pulmonary artery and then into the right pulmonary artery. The left and right pulmonary artery will bring this blood to the lungs and then the blood from the lungs will return to the heart, to the left side of the heart via the left pulmonary vein and the right pulmonary vein. It will go to the left atrium here and then the left ventricle here and then from the left ventricle up through the aorta. And the top part of the aorta here is known as your aortic arch. The blood can then go up to the upper body or down to the lower body via the descending aorta from the back. Now there's a ligament here that connects the aortic arch with the pulmonary trunk. This is the ligamentum arteriosum, which is a remnant of the patent ductus arteriosus. Here's the apex of the heart. So that was the anterior view. Let us look at the posterior view. Just to see where we are, here is again the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, which will bring deoxygenated blood back to the right side of the heart, to the right atrium, then to the right ventricle here. The right ventricle will then pump the blood up through the pulmonary trunk here, and then from the pulmonary trunk, it will bifurcate to the left and right pulmonary artery. The blood goes to the lungs and then return back to the side, to the left side of the heart um, via the left and right pulmonary veins. The left and right pulmonary veins enters the left atrium. The left, the left atrium then goes to the left ventricle, which then goes and pumps this blood up the aorta. Here's your aortic arch. And then it can pump it up to the upper body or down through the descending aorta. So now I want to cut a cross section of the anterior view of the heart and see what's happening inside. And straight away, you can see that there are four chambers within the heart. And these are your atrium and your ventricles. So just again, recapping, here's your superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, which will bring blood to the right side of the heart, to the right atrium. From the right atrium, blood flows to the right ventricle through a valve known as a tricuspid valve. And then from the right ventricle, blood will flow up to the pulmonary trunk through another valve called the pulmonary valve. From the pulmonary trunk, blood will go to the lungs. From the lungs, blood will, will return to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. From the left atrium, blood flows to the left ventricle via the mitral valve. From the left ventricle, the left ventricle will pump this blood up the aorta via the aortic valve. And then blood will flow up to the upper body or down to the lower body via the descending aorta. Here is the apex of the heart again. Now that we know the flow of blood through the heart, let us look at the flow of blood from the heart to the body tissues and also from the heart to the lungs in a bit more detail. This is your systemic and pulmonary circulation. So here I'm drawing the heart and here is your lower body and upper body. So once your tissues around your body uses oxygen, deoxygenated blood will return to the right side of the heart. So here from the upper body, blood will, will return to the heart and from the lower body, blood will return to the right side of the heart, to the right atrium and then to the right ventricle. The deoxygenated blood will be pumped through the pulmonary trunk and towards the lung via the right and left pulmonary arteries. Now here I'm drawing the right lung and the left lung. Now this deoxygenated blood will undergo gas exchange within the lungs, represented in orange. So what happens here is that carbon dioxide will be released and the lungs will reoxygenate the blood with oxygen. And so now there is reoxygenated blood or oxygenated blood returning to the heart, to the left side of the heart. Again, 
In the lungs, carbon dioxide is removed and the lungs will re-oxygenate the blood. And so now in red, the oxygenated blood will return to the left side of the heart, to the left atrium, and then to the left ventricle. And then from the left ventricle, the blood is pumped up the aorta to the upper body or to the lower body. And again, this oxygen will be delivered to the tissues here. And again, gas exchange occurs represented in orange. What happens is that oxygen is offloaded to the body tissues. And then as a byproduct, carbon dioxide is released back into the blood. And so you get deoxygenated blood once again returning to the right side of the heart. Here again, you have oxygen being offloaded to the tissues and as a byproduct, carbon dioxide is released. And then you have deoxygenated blood returning to the right side of the heart. And the cycle continues. This diagram represents both pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. Now that we know the lungs and the heart are in very close proximity, I wanted to look at something clinical, looking at a chest x-ray and looking at what each uh, part of the x-ray represents. So coming off the left here is a normal chest x-ray. And the areas represented here, so this is your right lung and left lung. And here is your superior vena cava, not your IVC, your SVC. Here's your right atrium and here is your right ventricle. This is your pulmonary trunk here. Here's your left atrium and left ventricle. And this is your aorta. There are important angles to remember when looking at a uh, chest x-ray. These are your right cardiophrenic angles and your left cardiophrenic angles. And then your right costophrenic angles and your left costophrenic angles. These areas are important because blunting of these angles will represent something called pleural effusion. Another important landmark to remember are your right and left clavicles here. And in the middle, you can see tracheal shadows. The tracheal shadowing is really important because deviation of the tracheal shadow to the left or right can signify something called a tension pneumothorax. So again, this diagram that I drew represents a normal chest x-ray. And it's important to remember some of these areas because you can compare it to an abnormal chest x-ray, such as this one on the right, which is a chest x-ray of someone who has heart failure. And straight away, you can see that the heart is big. It occupies more than 50% of the cardiothoracic ratio. And straight away, you can see partly blunting of some of the angles, the cardiophrenic and costophrenic angles. So I hope this video was helpful. This was basic anatomy of the heart. You can continue watching uh, clinical anatomy of the heart focusing on the valves, the pericardium, and also the coronary arteries, and also the coronary vessels. Thank you for watching.